Hey everybody, it's Crypto Anarchist here and I'm bringing you guys another video on cryptocurrencies. In today's video, we're actually going to do a little bit of a tutorial video. It's going to be a very basic tutorial video and for the most part, we're actually going to be talking about uh, just how to know whether the full node that you use for your cryptocurrency is a good full node or not and you know the security considerations with your full node and specifically how it works. Um, I'm a big fan of full nodes. Um, I've talked for a very long time on this channel how I really like blockchain sharding, so even though like a sharded node or a partial node uh, it doesn't actually add anything to the network like witness nodes don't add anything to the network I still like them I still would like to have one uh, I don't necessarily want to like you know if Bitcoin cash or you know something like Zcoin we're gonna we're gonna show a Zcoin full node here if Zcoin is used used globally uh, I don't want to have to store all the transactions from everyone around the world but I would like to run a partial node that you know stores a couple transactions just so I can say you know at least I'm validating some things or not necessarily validating them but I'm I'm witnessing seeing them being validated on the blockchain so if I want to I can check the blockchain and just see a bunch of different examples very easily uh, that the blockchain is working and functioning um, I really do like uh, blockchain sharding even if you know a lot of people too they're talking about they'll say blockchain sharding is hard to do in proof of work I don't care if the blockchain sharding is done in a centralized manner like I don't care if I have to trust a bunch of miners to shard my blockchain that's fine to me but anyways moving on uh, in this at this point in time where blockchain sharding does not exist if you are downloading any sort of blockchain uh, like a full node for a blockchain the first consideration is can your system handle it um, so things like Bitcoin Ethereum or Bitcoin cash they have very large blockchains so not everyone's computer can handle it so you really shouldn't just download it because you're it might overload your system so that's why we're showing you here today uh, me downloading a full node for Zcoin it takes like a little bit over an hour on the computer I'm on and the computer I'm on I think it cost me like twelve hundred dollars or something like that uh, like four years ago so it's you know it's a decent computer but it's you know a little bit outdated so uh, it's it's it doesn't take a whole lot of space on the, the memory and it's very simple to uh, you know set up and get going on the processor so it's pretty simple in that manner so if you're trying to learn blockchains just in general I would highly recommend that you learn on a blockchain that is new and small you don't have to become an investor in that coin so you know maybe you don't actually like the coin Z coin I don't know how you couldn't like the coin Z coin but if you don't like the coin Z coin you can still use this as a direct tutorial on how to use you know most QT wallets because most coins use uh, some sort of uh, uh, different version of a wallet that looks basically like this. They all function pretty similarly. But uh, so if you learn how to use this wallet on Zcoin, you can learn how to use the wallet for most other wallets. And these wallets are full node wallets. I'm not talking about light clients or SPV nodes. And I do want to mention that SPV nodes and light clients are probably better to use for most people. You really only want to do a full node if you're trying to learn how blockchains work. It gives you sort of an upfront, like it shows you how the blockchain works. And the one thing that you'll learn pretty quickly when you use a full node is that every once in a while if there's like you know updates of software things like that things can go wrong with your full node like what your full node seems to show you but it doesn't matter because the blockchain uh, is always correct so even if like you know one day your full node is not syncing up like it's stuck on some certain block and it you can't show or you don't see new transactions it's not like those transactions didn't go through it's just that your full node doesn't see them yet so there's a lot of different scenarios where you know running a full node you can just see in like you you don't have to try and understand things theoretically you can see them occur and you can understand how things work um, but anyways let's go ahead and talk about just a real quick introduction on why I like the Zcoin full node so Zcoin um, Unlike certain privacy coins, uh, you can actually encrypt your wallet.dat file, and you can see this down in the bottom right here. So if we look down here in the bottom right, you see that the uh, wallet.dat, it's, it's encrypted, or you see this little uh, lock here. It says wallet is encrypted and currently locked. So that's the default on... Uh, Zcoin is that uh, when you encrypt your wallet it's always locked uh, so this is really big because certain privacy coins like uh, Zcash, uh, Zencash, Z Classic, Bitcoin Private, anything that uses ZK Snarks you cannot encrypt your wallet 
uh, dot dat. So the, the problem with this is that whoever has access to your computer has access to your coins unless you encrypt the wallet dot dat file with outside encryption programs. And you got to be a little bit careful if you're encrypting it on your own manually because you know if you encrypt it incorrectly or you save some wallet dot dat file incorrectly, you could lose access to all your coins. So um, Zcoin it allows you to encrypt the wallet on its own. Uh, so that's what you want. That makes it easy. You want to avoid using a full node like if you're a newcomer I would not recommend doing Zcash, Zencash, Zclassic, Bitcoin Private. Those are not uh, full nodes for newcomers to be running. Those are things you want to avoid as a newcomer. And just so you guys know the type of encryption used by uh, that encrypts the wallet.dat the file, they use uh, AES encryption and AES encryption uh, depending on the difficulty that you use to create the uh, keys for AES. Um, it can be uh, used to encrypt documents up to top secret for government officials so that means that you know governments who have lots of dirty secrets that they want to keep hidden they trust this protocol the AES protocol um, and so you know when you encrypt your wallet so long as you have a good passphrase uh, a passphrase with enough entropy and we've had a video on that already and you can see that if you want to but uh, if you, as long as you have a good passphrase your coins are safe and there's no way anyone's getting into it just so and an another additional example of this is uh, Mt. Gox. Uh, if you guys didn't hear this recently, but the 200,000 Bitcoin that they found after you know getting all their Bitcoin stolen was actually uh, just Bitcoin uh, saved on a wallet that was just just a wallet.dat file that was secured by the AES encryption. So Mt. Gox actually had their cold wallet stolen from because they set it up incorrectly or something back in the early days of Bitcoin and then they like the only wallet that they actually kept under their control was a hot wallet that was just encrypted I think is uh, what happened uh, I can't tell you specifically on this you'll have to look that up yourself but the AES encryption on these wallets it's very good so be wary of any coin that does not have them and just so you guys know the reason why ZK Snark coins do not have this encryption is because I guess it makes it so that the privacy doesn't work for the coin or something I don't really know um, like I said, I know how to use PGP encryption, so I will use, like, I do use these full nodes. Uh, so far, I've never actually sent much money at all to any full nodes that use ZK Snarks, uh, but, you know, I can't do it. It just makes me nervous, and it should sort of make everybody nervous. But anyways, um, after you get through that uh, most important aspect of the full node, which is the encryption and understanding how it works, and again, if the, if the node's not encrypted, you can't encrypt it yourself, so that doesn't make the uh, coin completely insecure it just means you have to know what you're doing it just raises the uh, difficulty for your average user but uh, the next thing you need to look at is you know did, did they give you a seed phrase or manual passphrase generation the reason why I ask you this is because generally speaking like most people who use cryptocurrencies they actually use uh, light wallets and SPV wallets and those give you a, a seed phrase uh, the problem with the seed phrase is there's additional security aspects um, when you actually like because they they'll give you the seed phrase and they show that to you in plain text so that means if you're standing there and there's somebody looking over your shoulder and they you know have their phone out and they take a picture of the seed phrase of your wallet then they've got your wallet you know what i mean so there's there's additional um security issues with uh wallets that give you a seed phrase uh, and like I said those are usually light wallets they're generally not full nodes so this isn't usually something you'll run into if you're actually you know if you're using this tutorial to try and learn how to run a full node uh, but that's something that you need to remember um, and then just always remember you know if you have manual passphrase generation uh, there's a couple things to remember uh, that you have to check on uh, when you encrypt the wallet that that file and I'm actually skipping here from going from the third point here to the fifth point and the one of the things that you have to check is does the wallet that that file break after encryption and what I mean by that is when you first start a full node it's not encrypted you have to like turn encryption on so that should be the first thing that you guys do in case you're wondering if you look up here in the top left uh, you'll go over here you'll go to file uh, settings and encrypt wallet as you can see uh, the encrypt wallet here it's not uh, dark for me I can't click on it because I'm, I'm, I'm already encrypted if you're not encrypted you won't have this symbol down here and you won't be able to hover over this it won't say wallet is encrypted and currently locked um, it won't say that so uh, when your wallets not encrypted what you want your wallet 
dot dat file to have happen is if you encrypt that wallet you want your old unencrypted wallet to break because if you think about it when you download your wallet if your unencrypted wallet always acted as a backup then that would mean anyone who had access to that initial unencrypted wallet would be able to access your coins after that even after you encrypted it however with most coins with most good coins when you encrypt your wallet the uh, wallet that dat file breaks and with zcoin I'm pretty sure it even gives you a little warning and it just lets you know hey if you stored your wallet dot dat backup before you encrypted your wallet or then you're gonna have to you know uh, get another backup because any unencrypted backups are broken when you encrypt the uh, backup. But anyways, uh, that's a really important thing. The second thing to remember is even if later on, see, uh, I can't do encrypt wallet now, but I can change my passphrase if I want to. And my passphrase is pretty long. It's like, you know, it's very long. It's not actually what I'm typing in here, but it's very long. Um, so if I were to try to change that passphrase, the one thing you have to remember is that your old wallet dot dot backups uh, still have access to those coins so if you actually like if you think that someone has access to one of your wallet dot dat backups or one of your backup files one of your recovery wallets uh, from a full node if you think someone has access to that or they have access to one of your passwords what you have to do is you have to create a new wallet which is a new wallet that isn't associated with those funds whatsoever with the new password itself and then you have to send funds from your um, from from your wallet that has been you know hacked or been compromised or whatever you have to send funds from the compromised wallet to the uncompromised wallet so even if your wallet does get compromised you can send funds out to an uncompromised wallet but that's assuming that you know if your wallet gets compromised the the attacker doesn't just immediately take all the funds so obviously you don't want to you know never never give anyone your passphrase for your wallet that's just stupid but um the next point, number four here, is is the wallet always encrypted? Can you turn it off? Um, you don't want your wallet to be easily um, unencrypted. You don't want to be able to easily turn the encryption off because then if anyone has access to your computer, they can easily send the coins. One thing, or one coin that has another really great full node wallet is Pivx. Pivx is one of my favorite coins. Other than Zcoin, it's the proof of stake version of Zcoin. Um, Pivx uh, actually might be the most private coin right now uh, on the market because they just implemented the uh, zero coin staking or whatever. So now there's not even a timing attack on the zero coin protocol. So there's no attacks to take away your not anonymity on zero coin protocol for Pivx. So I hope Zcoin follows suit with that. Uh, I think Zcoin is doing node or encrypting the node communication between peers. So as of right now, I think Sequin, you have more like IP address encryption and you will soon have more node communication encryption, but Pivx, technically speaking, has better blockchain privacy. So I hope those like, you know, I hope the two development groups sort of like, you know, not necessarily work together, but they take what's good from each coin and then they'll both be the most private coins on the market. But with Pivx, when you uh, decrypt or you can decrypt your wallet and you can just leave it unlocked for a while. So if you're using Pivx, that's another great wallet. There's nothing wrong with it. Just remember, if you ever unlock your wallet, that means anyone with access to your computer can and send the funds so just be careful uh, be careful if you uh, can completely unlock your wallet so the the next thing that uh, you want to find out uh, this final point here uh, can your private keys still be moved if your wallet is compromised and compromised I don't necessarily mean that an attacker has access to your funds compromise can simply mean you know for some reason maybe your computer's broken and like something's fixed on the hardware level and for some reason blocks just won't sync up or you know something's something's broken so that your wallet won't sync up and you can't send funds on it correctly just something's just wrong so uh, the good news is is that you can always with um, Z coin and with most um, with most full nodes you can actually do this uh, if we actually bring here in the uh, debug window here um, one of the things you can do here in this debug window if you just press uh, help here you can look at all the uh, things that you can uh, type in here and actually if we look here at this uh, wallet passphrase uh, and wallet timeout, wallet lock, things like that. There's actually ways uh, within Zcoin that you can unlock your wallet for certain periods of time. There's certain um, 
there's certain bits of code that you can input, but the, the, the difference between Zcoin and PIVX is with Zcoin, you have to go to these console commands in order to, you know, unlock your wallet for a bit of time. With PIVX, it's just one of the options uh, up here in the top left uh, on one of these tabs. So I don't, I prefer a coin that makes it hard for you to unlock your wallet for a long period of time. I know that's a little bit of a tangent, but uh, if we go back here, what we're looking for here is... Uh, getting your private key it's uh, I think it's dump private key yeah so this is actually how you um, get your private key from any address that you have on a wallet here I actually for some reason it's not letting me there we go if I go here to dump private key and uh, the dump private key to the Bitcoin address. The, where, when it says Bitcoin address there, that just means your the address that you want the private key for. So if you ever have a wallet, and this is this is a very important thing, you always have to know what to do if something gets catastrophically wrong. So if you ever ever if you ever have a wallet that for some reason will not sync, you can't get it to rescan, nothing's working, um, but you can at least open it up to get to where you're just right here, where you can see this uh, in the bottom right here. You see this check right. Right here it says it's synchronized and it's finished if you can't get it to sync and sync up the synchronization it will say it won't say it's finished and it'll say you've got so much more work to do or maybe for some reason you're on the wrong you know soft fork blockchain and you can't get it on the right blockchain so maybe it says it's synced up but you're on the wrong chain so things aren't working correctly this will still work so this is your sort of backup just in case everything goes wrong this is how you get your private key off your full node and you will do this dump private key for a big Bitcoin address and you will type that in and you'll type that in down here and uh, so you'll just do uh, you know dump private key dump private key right here and then you do space and then you type the Bitcoin address or you type the address that you want and that's how you get your private key out and then once you have that private key you can send that private key to another full node to a light wall it doesn't matter once you have the private key you can do whatever you want with it again the thing to remember is that with a private key whoever has your private key has your key has your coin so you know if you do the dump private key thing make sure you do it uh, when your computer is safe you don't want to do it if it's compromised you don't you know want you want to be secure with that private key you don't want to have a bunch of people who know about it it should just be you that knows about it but that's something um, you know that's that's a big thing that you have to know you have to know a couple things when you're using a full note you know is the wallet.dat file encrypted um, when the wallet.dat file is encrypted what are the attack vectors that you have to know about if the if it's given if you're given a seed phrase like in a light wallet or something like that then what you need to remember is that um, when you're given that seed phrase, if it's shown in plain text, anyone who can see that has access to your funds. So obviously that is a security vulnerability. If it's a manual password uh, generation, then the only thing you have to worry about is a key logger. You have to worry about a key logger no matter what, and a key logger would just, you know, um, you know, track what you're typing in. Those sorts of attacks aren't really that they don't happen that often they're kind of hyper rare but you know they do happen but so obviously this lets you know that a full node's generally speaking more secure than the uh, light node because seed phrase you know that's an additional attack vector the next thing remember you want to remember is is that wallet always encrypted you know can you turn it off with zcoin again zcoin has the highest quality encryption that I think you know you can have in that it you can turn the encryption off you can unlock the wallet it's just hard for the average user to do you have to go out of your way to do it so the average user won't get their funds stolen because they accidentally unlock their wallet so I really like the way Zcoin does it um, you know does the uh, wallet file break after encryption Zcoin does you always have to remember this you know after you encrypt a wallet you got to remember if your backups work or not you know or whether or not if you change a password whether or not your backups still work and so your backups will always work after changing a password but if you have no password and then create you know and then you encrypt your wallet and have a pat you know you create create a password then it will break your old wallet.dat file so that those are the things that you got to remember and then you just got to remember the final thing you can always get your private key out of there again just like I said you go to help you go to the debug window 
uh, you go to console and again it's just right there again down there it's dump private key and then you would just type in the address that you want the private key for and once you have that address uh, or once you have type that address in there and hit that it gives you the private key and so with that private key you can take that private key to any other wallet software and then you have access to your coins again so that's one of the things that I really love about a full node is it just gives you a lot of options it just makes things really simple and you get to see things from every point of view and I'll have some more videos coming out on full nodes here um, one quick thing here uh, I guess uh, while we're going I will I'm gonna create a um, donation address here for Z coin um, and I guess it's the crypto anarchist but yeah, I'm gonna create a donation address here for myself uh, if you like the videos here you can send a donation here um, I will put the uh, link to the, or I'll put the address uh, in the information below here. Uh, always remember these uh, donations will, they'll come in the tutorial videos and I'll put something in the title, you know, in case you don't actually need to watch tutorial videos but you want to send donations. Just remember they always will be in tutorial videos, so that's why, where you'll find donation addresses, um, as well as just in the information below. But uh, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned some things about the encryption of the, the uh, full node software that you use because it's very important as well as some of the uh, you know basic vulnerabilities vulnerabilities you can have for different wallet software as and uh, uh, as well as the uh, final function and of the dump private key which is just a that's a like the, it's like a kill switch on a motorcycle you know people don't really seem to tell people what the you know the the emergency stop or the uh, kill switch is when they're showing them how to use new equipment, and I feel like that's always the way you, you want to start. So uh, I, I feel like that's something people really need to know. So I, if you enjoyed this, you know, send a small donation to this Zcoin address right here, this one that says Crypto Anarchist. You can put a Zcoin address, or you can send donations to any of these other Zcoin addresses. Um, I'm going to do some more videos later on on how to do interesting things with those Zcoin addresses. You'll notice some of them have interesting names, and they have interesting names because I'm going to use them as examples examples in different videos but like I said if you want to send a donation just send a donation address to the one uh, titled crypto the crypto anarchist uh, if you send it to the other ones I'll probably still keep those addresses so I'll still have those but uh, the, the one that's titled the crypto anarchist that starts with a7eg and ends with sttm uh, that's the one that's my donation address so uh, anyways if you like that uh, send a donation address there I would really appreciate it um, it'll help uh, even if it's something really small it'll help keep me you know interested and excited and uh, keeping making more videos I know sometimes I take long uh, sort of YouTube creation or video creation vacations and some people really don't like that so if you want me to not take those long vacations then you know just send a small donation and uh, I'd really appreciate I I'd really uh, appreciate it but uh, anyways uh, that's the end of this video like I said there will be more videos coming out soon we're gonna be talking about rooting and the lightning network as well as more tutorial videos with this Z coin full node uh, just so that you guys understand some of the basic functions of you know how to use full nodes in cryptocurrencies as well as some of the common intellectual um, arguments that are being passed around uh, in the current times in the cryptocurrency world so anyways hope you enjoyed this there will be more coming out soon